At the start of the film, our protagonist Kate talks about different ways of cooking quail. Since she's a chef by profession, she has no shortage of knowledge when it comes to this topic. However, there's one problem at the moment. She's currently talking to her therapist, and he's bored out of his mind. He stops her and asks why she comes to therapy every week. We find out that Kate's boss wants her to go to therapy, and she has no idea why. In the next scene, we see Kate in her element as a professional chef. She takes command of the kitchen flawlessly, like clockwork. At one point, Kate's boss, Paula, tells her to greet some regular customers that like her dishes. Kate insists that the head chef should remain in the kitchen. Later, we see Kate receiving compliments from two customers before they leave. After that, she tries to head to the kitchen, but something catches her attention. A customer is complaining about the foie gras not being properly cooked. Kate argues with him and elaborates on the exact process of how the dish is cooked. This results in the customer walking out of the restaurant and Kate makes a sarcastic remark as he does. Back in the kitchen, Paula scolds Kate, reminding her not to make a scene every time a customer doesn't like the food. She then comments on how if Kate wasn't one of the better chefs in the city, she would fire her. Kate dismisses the statement, thinking that Paula is just saying that to annoy her. Fast forward to the next day, Kate wakes up early in the morning to pick out some fresh ingredients for the restaurant. Judging by the way she interacts with the vendors, it's obvious that she's well acquainted with them. Later that day, Kate gets a call from her sister, Christine. Kate's sister and niece are on their way to her city. During the call, Christine makes a few jokes about how Kate has no other hobby aside from cooking. Before ending the call, the sisters make some dinner plans for when they eventually meet. When Kate heads out to work, she comes across Sean, a guy who is interested in dating her. He asks her if she wants to make a dinner date sometime, to which Kate quickly declines. She has a rule against going out with anyone from the same building. Sean points out that Kate seems to follow a lot of self-imposed rules in her life. In the next scene, we see Kate preparing a gourmet dish for her therapist during the therapy session. At the start of the session, the therapist asks Kate the last time she was in a relationship. We find out that it's been three years since she had a boyfriend. She ended the relationship because her ex-boyfriend wanted her to leave her apartment and move in with him. Kate loves her job too much to move to another place, so she called the relationship off. The therapist becomes so distracted by the food that he forgets to ask further questions. Later that night, Kate is back in the restaurant kitchen doing her duties as a chef. At first the waitress picks up the phone, but since the call is important, the waitress hands the phone to Kate. She finds out that her sister and niece have been involved in a car accident. Kate rushes to the hospital and sees her niece, Zoe, lying in bed. The doctor arrives and talks to Kate. We discover that Christine has passed away, but the doctor chooses not to disclose that information yet to Zoe. He wants someone close to the kid to deliver the bad news. The next day, Kate wakes up and sees Zoe already awake in her bed. The kid asks where her mother is, and if her mother is gone. Kate can only respond in silence, and Zoe understands what that silence means. They both get emotional as the reality sinks in. Back in the restaurant, we see Paula in a meeting with her kitchen staff. She is showing them a new wine she added to the menu. Suddenly, Kate enters the restaurant and heads to the kitchen. The other staff are shocked to see her. They don't expect her to come to work immediately following a tragic event. Paula approaches Kate and asks her if she's sure about coming back to work so soon. Kate puts up a strong front, but it's obvious she's not in the right headspace. At one point while working, Kate remembers a letter that her sister gave her. In that letter, Christine mentions that if anything happens to her, she wants Kate to take care of Zoe. We see her reading the letter inside the refrigerated storage room, sobbing. Paula sees Kate's sad state, so she goes to her and tells her to take a break for one week. She emphasizes that it's not a suggestion, but an order. Kate nods while tears run down her face. In the next scene, Kate visits Zoe at the hospital. She brings food with her, but the child rejects it, stating she's not hungry. Kate sits down and tells the little girl what's going to happen after she's discharged from the hospital. Zoe wants to go home, but Kate points out that such a thing will not be possible since, from that point forward, they will live together. We fast forward to the day when Zoe is discharged. Kate brings the child to her apartment and shows Zoe her new room. After that, they attend Christine's funeral. Then the next day, they finish moving all of Zoe's possessions to Kate's apartment. We see the child's room filled with stuffed animals. During dinner, Kate serves some cooked fish, but Zoe doesn't want to eat it. The kid ends up going back to her room. Later, Kate leaves the apartment to go back to the restaurant. Before doing so, she gives Zoe instructions on how to call her if she needs anything. Upon arriving at the restaurant, Kate hears classical music being played from the kitchen. When she arrives in the kitchen, she sees a male chef, the one who is acting as her temporary replacement. All of a sudden, he starts asking her about the secret to her saffron sauce. Then he dials the volume up on the music and starts acting like an opera conductor. Kate watches in horror as the new chef starts singing, and the rest of the kitchen crew sing as well. While everyone else is amused, Kate feels like her kitchen is being disrespected. She asks him who he is, and he introduces himself as Nicholas Palmer, while giving her a compliment regarding her truffle sauce. Kate immediately faces Paula, who is behind her, and demands that they have a conversation. Kate interrogates Paula on why she decided to hire a lunatic. 
Paula points out that Nick is just an eccentric guy. But he's an excellent chef. According to her, she simply couldn't resist hiring him when she discovered he was available. They continue to argue across the restaurant, neither of them willing to concede. At one point, Paula shares that Nick has better opportunities, but is in his current job because he wants to work with Kate specifically. At the end of the discussion, Kate walks out and heads home. When Kate gets home, she finds Zoe asleep in her bed in front of the television. She finds out that the little girl was browsing through her photo album, looking at pictures of Christine. Kate takes a moment to think deeply about her new life as Zoe's guardian. The next day, Kate oversleeps, and Zoe ends up waking her up. Kate doesn't realize that it's Zoe's first day at school, and she needs to take her there. Fortunately, Zoe is ready to go. However, Zoe insists on finding her favorite scarf before heading out. After finding the scarf, the two are held up again by Sean, asking for some coffee beans. Kate eventually drops Zoe off at school, and she watches as a school staff member guides the child to her classroom. In the next scene, Kate is talking to her therapist. This time, she is actually opening up about what's bothering her. She doesn't think she is suited to be Zoe's guardian, citing that she can't even get the kid to eat. The therapist thinks that Zoe might be missing her mother's cooking. He suggests that she serve something simple, like fish sticks. Kate finds the suggestion ridiculous, but she's willing to give it a go. Later, Kate picks up Zoe from school. She tries to strike up a conversation and asks about the kid's day, but Zoe hardly gives any substantial answers. For lunch, Kate gives the kid some fish sticks and asks her more questions, such as Zoe's favorite color. The little girl responds by telling Kate that she doesn't need to try so hard to be a maternal figure. Seconds later, the doorbell rings, and Kate sees who is at the door. Zoe's babysitter arrives, but Kate is surprised by her appearance. Kate didn't expect the agency to send a teenage goth girl. Zoe tries to persuade Kate that she doesn't need a babysitter. Still, Kate thinks otherwise, especially after last night, when Zoe barricaded her bedroom door. When Kate arrives at work, she immediately turns off the music, because it's distracting. When the kitchen crew has their early dinner, Nick tries to serve Kate something he made. She insists that she doesn't eat late in the afternoon. Nick guilt trips her, stating that the recipe came from his deceased grandmother. Kate humors him and takes a bite, but seconds later, she finds out that Nick's grandma is still alive, and he is just messing with her. When the work begins, Kate cuts a copy of the restaurant menu in half. She hands the other half to Nick, telling him that he's in charge of those dishes. That way, they won't get in each other's way. The work in the kitchen is uneventful. Nick and Kate are able to work in harmony without any conflict. At one point, Nick strikes up a conversation with Kate, asking her about her education. She gives him short answers and nothing more. During this conversation, Kate messes up her plating and blames having little space to move. Out of the blue, Nick asks her why she hates him. This is when Kate reveals that she doesn't want him to take her kitchen away from her, given that she's worked so hard to earn her position as head chef. Out of frustration, Kate heads inside the refrigerated storage room to cool off. Nick follows her and tells her that he's willing to leave if Kate doesn't want him there. Paula enters the room and asks what's going on. Nick makes a scene by handing in his apron and gathering his utensils. Paula begs him to stay, but Nick insists he will only work there if Kate wants him to. He wants to hear it straight from the head chef's mouth. This stunt convinces Kate that Nick is not after her position. She unenthusiastically tells him that he can continue working in the kitchen. When Kate gets home, the babysitter is no longer there. The food is untouched, and one of the plates was employed as an ashtray. She heads to Zoe's room and sees the girl talking to her stuffed toys under the bed. Kate suggests that Zoe should join her tomorrow at the restaurant. Then she tucks her into bed, or in this case, under it. The next day, Kate brings Zoe to the restaurant and makes her sit somewhere in the kitchen. While working, Nick overhears Kate talking about how hard it is to feed Zoe. He then moves his work close to Zoe and shows her some basil leaves. After that, he takes a break from work and eats some spaghetti beside the kid. When he returns to work, he gives the plate of spaghetti to Zoe. After a few seconds, Zoe can no longer resist hunger and eats it. Nick successfully tricks her into finally eating some good food. Kate goes back to the kitchen after greeting some customers, and she sees Zoe eating. She finds out that Nick is responsible for the miracle, so she silently thanks him with a nod. Nick is happy that he could help. After the work ends, Kate exits the establishment along with Zoe. Before leaving, she makes sure to say goodnight to Nick. The next day, Kate wakes up early in the morning to do her usual morning ingredient shopping. Zoe sees her leaving and asks where she's going. She decides to take the kid to the wet market, but once they are there, Zoe is bored and sleepy. Later, they both crash on the couch to sleep some more, but this results in Zoe being late for school. Later that day, Kate and one of her co-workers meet up with their usual truffle supplier. The co-worker's water breaks, so the supplier calls an ambulance. Kate becomes so occupied with helping her pregnant co-worker that she forgets to pick up Zoe from school. She only realizes this after returning to her apartment. When Kate goes to pick up Zoe, the kid is understandably angry. She thinks that Kate has forgotten. Kate apologizes and tells her the reason why she forgot, but Zoe is too pissed off to listen to her. When they get home, Kate apologizes once more to Zoe, who is lying in bed, ignoring her. She asks the kid if there is something she can do to make it up to her. 
This is when Zoe finally responds and asks if she can get a wish granted. Kate agrees and Zoe saves her wish for some other time. By the end of the conversation, they make up and the kid reassures Kate that she appreciates her. In the next scene, we see Zoe helping Kate out in the restaurant kitchen. After smelling the expensive truffles, the little girl accidentally throws them in the trash can. Fortunately, Kate finds the truffles before they go bad. Nick sees what happened and laughs. He then takes his time to teach Zoe about the different ingredients in the kitchen and how important each of them is. The next sequence of scenes shows Zoe bonding with Nick in the kitchen. They look like a father and daughter duo. When the kitchen crew eats early dinner, Zoe is there with them, enjoying a meal. Kate also eats, a sight which Nick is happy to see. The next day, Zoe and Kate are walking in a park. The little girl asks Kate if Nick is available on Sunday. Zoe wants Nick to cook an Italian dish for her. She points out that she'll use the wish she's saving for that request. Later, Kate informs Nick about Zoe's request, and they make plans to cook at Kate's apartment. Fast forward to the agreed date, Nick arrives at Kate's place carrying a handful of supplies and ingredients. Zoe shows him where to go, and together they start making preparations to cook authentic Italian pizza. Kate offers to help, but they insist that she relax for now and let them handle the cooking. Nick teaches Zoe how to knead the dough, and she's having much fun doing it. When they finish cooking and setting up, Zoe takes Kate to her room, where she sees a lovely indoor picnic set up. Zoe imagines that they are on a safari. The three of them enjoy the meal like a happy family. After eating, they play some games until late in the evening. Zoe eventually falls asleep after having so much fun. After Nick places Zoe in her bed, he and Kate get to know each other more. He shares the story of how he became a chef. We find out that Nick learned to cook well after working at a restaurant his ex-girlfriend's father owned. Unfortunately, once their relationship was discovered, he got fired. Kate becomes curious and asks why a good chef like Nick isn't running his own restaurant. He admits that the opportunity to do so hasn't presented itself yet. Nick opens the fridge and takes out the dessert he placed there earlier. He asks Kate to have a taste, but she declines at first, saying that she's not into dessert. Eventually, Nick persuades her to eat the dessert with him, and she playfully takes back her previous statement. Nick sits beside Kate and cracks a joke about tiramisu. After some time, he tells her that he should head home. Nick leans in to grab his scarf behind Kate, but she thinks he is going for a kiss. Kate smiles after realizing her mistake. In the next scene, Kate talks to his therapist about Nick, complaining about how unpredictable he is. The therapist throws some shade, telling Kate that she might end up finally finding someone that tolerates her. Kate is amused that a therapist would casually insult a client, so she lets it slide. Later that day, Kate drops Zoe off to school. The principal calls her attention and speaks to her in private. According to the principal, Zoe was caught sleeping in class on multiple occasions. We find out that Zoe has been telling her teachers that she's working at Kate's restaurant. The principal warns Kate that if Zoe continues to arrive at class tired, she might contact child support. However, she also believes that Kate is capable of addressing the situation, therefore eliminating the need for such an extreme measure. After school, Kate tells Zoe that she can't come to the restaurant anymore. She does a poor job of explaining why this is the case. Hence, Zoe cries, thinking that Kate doesn't want her around anymore. Kate fails to calm the child down, and Zoe ends up running away from her. Kate chases the kid, who almost gets hit by a taxi. When Kate catches up to Zoe, the kid scorns her by saying she wants to be with her late mother, not Kate. This statement stings her, so she lets go of Zoe's hand and watches the kid run off to their apartment. In the next scene, we see Zoe looking at a photo album again. Kate enters the room and tries to apologize, but the kid doesn't want to talk to her. Kate decides to leave her be. Before going to work, Kate talks to Sean and asks him if he can check on Zoe from time to time while she's out. Sean is happy to do a favor for her. He also gives her the contact details of a reliable babysitter that he hired a lot after he became divorced. The next scene takes place in the restaurant kitchen. Kate is listening to Nick read a review of Kate's dishes in the newspaper. After that, Nick notices that something is weighing on Catter's mind, so he invites her to have a drink after work. Fast forward to later that evening, we see them have a romantic dinner inside the kitchen. After enjoying wine and good food, Nick drives Kate back to her apartment. When Kate opens the door to her apartment, she sees Sean inside. For a few seconds, the situation becomes awkward. Kate quickly introduces the two men to each other. Sean shakes Nick's hand and quickly goes back to his own place, not wanting to see his crush with another man for long. After he leaves, Kate explains to Nick who Sean is and why he is in the apartment. Kate tries to talk more about how great of a neighbor Sean is, but Nick stops her from talking. He then plants a kiss on her lips before leaving. She can't help but smile after that. Late into the evening, Kate is woken up after noticing Zoe heading to the living room. When she follows her, she sees the kid watching video recordings of Christine on the television. She joins her, and the two of them become emotional while watching fond memories of a person they both love dearly. When they wake up the next day, Zoe tells Kate that she doesn't want to go to school. Kate responds by saying she, too, doesn't want to go to work, and they go back to sleep. Meanwhile, at the restaurant, Nick notices that Kate is running late. 
Paula tells him that Kate requested a day off to deal with some personal matters. In the next scene, we see Kate and Zoe playing Monopoly. Kate wins the game in a spectacular manner. This leads Zoe to initiate a pillow fight with her, one that involves running around the apartment. The rest of the day goes by, with them having a ton of fun. Later that night, we see Nick acting as head chef for the night, and doing a good job at it. After work, Paula talks to him and praises him for his stellar work. She then offers Nick a permanent position at the restaurant. He admits that he'd be happy to work there for good, as long as it's okay with Kate. After talking to Paula, Nick visits Kate at her apartment. While doing a blind taste test, he talks to her about how hard it is to run the kitchen without her. When Kate tastes the first spoonful, she guesses all the correct flavors and ingredients in it. Then, instead of letting her taste the spoon for the next one, Nick delivers the flavors using his lips. Instead of tasting food, Nick and Kate are now tasting each other's lips non-stop. The next day, Nick wakes Zoe up and asks if she wants to make pancakes with him. The kid gladly helps out in the kitchen, since she loves hanging out with Nick. During breakfast, Nick doesn't hide the fact that he likes Kate, and even kisses her in front of Zoe. After eating breakfast, the three head out to take some pictures together, and continue bonding like a family. Kate takes Nick and Zoe to a Chinese shop and buys special herbs. Nick figures out that the herb is the secret ingredient to Kate's famous saffron sauce. After that, the trio continues enjoying the rest of their day. In the next scene, we see the kitchen crew talking about certain dishes on the menu, making sure everyone is aware of the details of each dish. Paula goes over to Nick and thanks him for a few recommendations he made. Not wanting to look like he's overstepping, he points out that any changes to the menu should be discussed with Kate. That night in the kitchen, Paula comes over and asks Nick to go out and greet some customers, something that she usually asks Kate to do. Kate notices this, and she can't help but feel intrigued. She drags Nick to the cold storage room and asks him why Paula is suddenly treating him like he's the head chef. Nick reveals that Paula offered him the position of sous chef. As expected, Kate gets upset, and this leads to them arguing. During the argument, they bring up Kate's trust issues, and how she refuses to lower her walls for anyone. Kate points out that the kitchen is all she has, that it's her identity. Nick doesn't think that's the case. They fail to resolve anything while talking, and Nick ends up walking away and leaving the restaurant. When Kate goes back home, she listens to a voicemail sent by Nick, saying that he turned down Paula's offer. When she passes by Zoe's room, the kid asks her about Nick. Zoe notices that Kate looks sad, so she offers one of her stuffed animals. Kate finds the gesture sweet, but she declines and tells the kid goodnight. The next day at work, Paula scolds Kate. She blames her for Nick leaving, and demands that she finds a replacement as soon as possible. She does what Paula asks and interviews several applicants, all of which are clearly unfit for the job they are applying for. One night, Zoe asks Kate why Nick isn't visiting anymore. Kate admits that she and Nick fought, and that he is likely not going to visit anymore. Zoe gets upset by this revelation and decides to go to her room to mope. The next day, when Kate calls for Zoe to join her for breakfast, she doesn't find the kid in her room. The little girl is nowhere to be seen in the house. She calls Nick to ask if Zoe went to him. After explaining the situation, Nick joins Kate to search of Zoe. They drive around for a while, but fail to find her. Kate and Nick go back to her apartment to see if Zoe returned. This is when Kate sees Zoe's favorite stuffed toy on the bed, which confirms that Zoe hasn't gone far. The little girl wouldn't run away without her favorite toy. This is when Kate suddenly realizes where Zoe could actually be. Nick and Kate head to the nearby cemetery and find Zoe near Christine's grave. Kate approaches the crying child and comforts her. She reassures Zoe that they will never forget Christine, no matter what. After the emotional reunion, Nick drives them back to their apartment building. Before parting ways, Nick apologizes to Kate. He informs her that he took a job as an executive chef in a different restaurant. He explains that Kate opened his eyes to the possibility of carving his own path as a chef. That night at work, Kate deals with a pesky customer that keeps returning the steak, saying that it's not rare enough. After the second time the steak is returned, Kate gets out of the kitchen and slams a raw steak in front of the problematic customer. After that, she proceeds to remove her apron and walk out of the restaurant, effectively quitting her job. Some time later, Kate talks to her therapist for a while, and during the conversation, she figures out her next career move. That night, she goes to Nick's apartment with some saffron sauce, and tells him not to go to his new job. In the final scene, we see Nick and Kate cooking together in their own business establishment. Zoe is there as well, helping out and serving customers. We also see some familiar characters enjoying a meal there, such as Sean and one of Kate's previous co-workers. The chef couple has a bright future ahead of them.